That was an amazing video from Christina Minnemeyer, co-founder of C Legacy. Today's panel, the CES 2021 Spotlight when CSR aligns with consumer values is gonna be focused on the correlation between corporate social responsibility and buyer preference. Let me tell you how we're defining corporate social responsibility. That includes community, employees, it covers diversity, equity, and inclusion across ancestry as well as gender. It also covers sustainability, how we show up for the earth. But does it resonate so much so that it creates a buyer's preference, especially in times where value and cost have come into great focus? Well, this panel is going to tell us. We're going to kick it off with Karen Show and Bart. She's the CEO of NPD, the eighth largest research firm in the nation, followed by COO and President Mike Fasulo at Sony Electronics. Then we'll have Christina Mittemeyer, as I've mentioned, and lots of great photography and insight from her. And finally, rounding it out with Tawalami Austin. She's the EVP of philanthropy at Sony Music. And without further delay, allow me to introduce Karen of NPD. What does the data say about buyer's preference and CSR? Sure, Cheryl, thanks so much. Uh, but first, one of the things that I talk about in the book is uh, mistakes that leaders make. And one of the biggest mistakes that leaders make is hiring people just like them. And while it, um, if you could show the slide, while it's fine to have a mini me as your offspring, and there's <laughs> mine, it, it's not such a great idea to hire a mini me when you're trying to build a team. Because in a team, you clearly want people who think differently. And I like this quote from William Wrigley, which says that when two men in business always agree, one of them is unnecessary. I'd like it better if it said when two people in business always agree, but you get the point. Anyway, what I'd like to share with you now is a real life case study. You know, we talk a lot about the benefits of diversity, what this will show is the downside of not having diversity. And what I'm going to show you is years lost, millions of dollars wasted, and actually people's lives lost as a result of not having diversity. So we'll start with, what do these people all have in common? Mike, what do these people all have in common? Uh, they all look like me, like uh, old white men. <laughs> Well, I wish all old white men were like you, Mike, but yes, they're all old white men. The other thing though, that they all had in common was that they were all on the board of Theranos. I think by now, all of you know the story of Elizabeth Holmes, a young woman from uh, California who had this theory that with one drop of blood, you could do all of the testing that would normally take many, many types of testing. And in theory, it was a fantastic idea. The problem was, it didn't work. And after 10 years, tens of millions of dollars, people's lives lost, they discovered that it didn't work. And one of the reasons that this happened was that the board wasn't doing their job. But I'm a researcher and I love research. And research has shown that homogenous groups put a lot of confidence in their peers' decisions. Even if someone made a mistake, people assumed it to be a reasonable choice. They trusted one another's judgments, even bad ones. If George Schultz, Secretary of State, thought this was a good idea, well, it must have been a good idea, even though it wasn't. Conversely, in diverse groups, people scrutinized mistakes more intensely. They copied them less often. They saw errors for what they were. And everyone was more skeptical. So again, this shows the downside of not having diversity in a real life example. Now, as the market researcher in the panel, uh, I'd like to share with you uh, some information about the correlation between consumers' opinions about social responsibility and their buying behaviors. MPD is a strategic investor in a company called Civic Science that asks thousands and thousands of consumers thousands and thousands of questions. When asked this question, how important to you is a company's social consciousness and overall kindness on choosing where to shop and what to buy? A whopping 84% of women 
feel that this is either very or somewhat important. And as you can see, that's a, a lot more than men. Now, during the pandemic, that was even greater. So last year, by March, this shows from January through March, that by March, nearly half of all women felt that this was very important. So why does this matter? Why should you care? Well, consumers, women really matter because they make the majority of household purchase decisions. When asked how many of household decisions do you make, as you can see here, 46% of women said that they make all of those decisions, all of them, and that's compared to less than 30% of men. So women do matter. Now we're at the Consumer Electronics Show this week. So what about CE? Well, women buy a lot of CE. Overall, women spend, uh, women are the purchases of about half of all consumer electronics. And while it certainly varies by category, they represent at least half of some of the big categories like TVs and PCs. And in some categories like digital still cameras, it's almost as high as almost 60%. So women matter. Women make a lot of decisions and women buy a lot of tech. So according to NPD's POS sales tracking, we know that this was 2020 was a very strong year for consumer electronics at retail. And we're forecasting things to continue to be pretty good. Q1 of 2021 is going to be very, very strong. Q1 will be up double digits. And for the whole year, while we'll be down a little from the outstanding 2020, we will be up 13% over 2019. So in summary, CE is poised to continue for success and women really matter to this success. So if you want to win the hearts and minds of your women consumers, don't ignore the importance of social responsibility and kindness because there really is that correlation. Thanks. Karen, that was great data, and thank you for confirming. Uh, up next is going to be Mike Fasulo, and he's really going to talk about what Sony does uh, to show up for the consumers and for social justice. Mike? Okay, thanks, Cheryl. And Karen, that uh, presentation was was just remarkable. If I can, if I can just make a couple of comments. You know, the um, I've known you for many years, and you're remarkable. And NPD as a research company and vendor and partner of Sony and SNA is um, we cherish that. But uh, I really want to wanted to comment on your stats, uh, particularly as it relates to the buying power of women. And I think you said 50, 52 percent, I think, was the buying power. And, you know, we've all been working from home, me, me included. And I can tell you that um, in the office, I may make more than 50 percent of the decisions. Uh, but here in this household, um, not even close. So I can, I can a research of one. I can validate your comment on the on the power of women, at least in this household. And I, you know, getting back to the seriousness and the stats and the science, um, I think the influence is even higher than that. Yeah. So this was um, using NPD's receipt pal data, which uh, we actually collect receipts from consumers on every single thing they buy, and so we know who bought what. And that showed that over 50% of women are actually buying TVs, they're buying PCs. They're not just influencing those decisions, they're making the purchase. Karen, definitely a fact we should all be paying more attention to. You know, and then bring it back to Sony. For 75 years, everyone knows Sony has been an organization that's been laser focused on innovation. Uh, but, you know, I wanna talk a little bit about beyond innovation, because we leverage that strength, not just to create the industry's best leading products, but also to make immediate changes that affect people in society and demonstrate the care and respect we have for our colleagues, for our customers, for our communities, not only here in North America, but all over the world. And I think our financial investments in CSR, such as the Social Justice Fund and the COVID-19 Global Relief Fund, um, show that we're committed to this, that it's, it's not just words. And there should be no doubt about our, our commitment to contributing to a better society for everyone. Uh, the organizations that you're seeing on the screen, you know, they receive PPE and also our employees were able to match donations. Um, but we also are looking at the creative community as well, who's been devastated 
by COVID and been multiple benefactors and groups. Looking at it holistically, diversity and engagement and inclusion brings lots of different perspectives. And, and we're very much in, uh, proponents to embrace and respect and understand understand different different cultures. And and speaking of cultures, you know, cultures and values, you know, I think that's the DNA of a company. And if you look at our written values within our company, uh, you'll find words like diversity, integrity, sincerity. And I believe when a company focuses on their purpose and their values, consumers take notice, they take action, and those words actually transcend to commitment and, and practice. And I give our CEO, Ken Yoshida, a lot of credit for driving that culture throughout Sony all over the world. So now how do we take care of our next generation leaders? What's the right thing to do for the next generation? The folks that didn't replace all of us, how, how do we take care of our environment as well? You know, how do we piece these things together? Frankly, my generation didn't do a great job of it. So now, you know, looking at STEAM, and, and I say STEAM, not STEM, because arts is so critically important, and we talk about creativity, and arts and creativity is part of STEAM. And no one better than the opening video from Christina Mittemeyer, who we're going to hear from a little bit later on, on you know, not only saving the environment, but arts. But we also know that, that kids are more engaged when they're hands-on. And robotics is one of those things. And COOV, um, our robotics for, for kids, we've made hundreds of donations to educational institutions multiple states, and, and it's the, you know, the future of our society. We also just announced, uh, or will be announcing a relationship with UCSD, where we're going to say uh, the Kube Academy, where we're actually going to have um, work with teachers on how to get comfortable in teaching about coding and teaching about robotics. And we made donations there as well. Um, then, you know, you, you think about it in, in a broader broader perspective of you know, kids, uh, less fortunate kids. And, and what are we doing to give them a chance? And, and I've got to tell you, I've been working with Boys and Girls Clubs of America for um, over a decade. And, you know, it's, it's magic. When you put technology in their hands, it's magic. And just seeing that is, is believing. And, I, you know, we've put in teen tech centers. We have one right here in, in San Marcos. And in the teen tech center, you know, there's a there's a little studio where uh, kids can create a music track. There's a lineup where they can do photography and then edit it. And the magic that comes out of that, I always say, seeing is believing, and you're seeing some of this on on the slides here. So so it's really about not only helping those in need, but giving them the tools and the confidence and the ability to really create and be the future leaders that that we need. Um, and, you know, people ask, well, how, how do you connect that all to business? Well, don't take it from me. Look at this slide from one of one of our friends over the CEO, Chip over at Levi Strauss. And, you know, look at the words. He, he says the same thing that I'm saying. You're connecting the values and purpose of your company with your consumers in the business market. During COVID, fashion industry is struggling, not his. He's actually up and his business is, is doing very well. So let me leave you with uh, one, final, one final thought or one final piece, and it's gonna be a clip from uh, Jermaine Horton. Jermaine Horton is a professional photographer amongst other, other professions, and he's one of our artisans, um, our alpha artisans. And he also was a Boys and Girls Club kid. And he, he says that the Boys and Girls Clubs helped him stay away from, um, getting in trouble as a kid. And now he's giving back and he's giving back by building confidence in kids of color that, that need this, this mentoring, for lack of better words. So rather than hear from me, let's take a look at uh, Jermaine's video. I think you're gonna find it to be uh, very motivating. I kind of think about, you know, where I came from, the issues that plagued my community. And when I think about how many children in my neighborhood didn't have the confidence or the courage to speak out against things that was going on in their lives. And that's why it's so important to have a familiar location like the Boys and Girls Club. The one thing 
that I truly appreciate about the Boys and Girls Club was that it gave us a safe haven. I don't think people really understand how important that is when you're in certain neighborhoods. They don't have anyone to talk to and the Boys and Girls Club was a place that those friendly familiar faces you felt like you can open up and be vulnerable to those individuals. And that's the reason why I decided that I wanted to work with the Boys and Girls Club with the Art of Confidence Project and make sure that we can reach as many children as possible so that we can help them overcome the adversities that they're going through, not just in their neighborhoods, but in their personal lives too. So I'm really excited Sony decided to partner with Art of Confidence Project and that we have come together with the Boys and Girls Club. I'm looking forward to this union, how we can impact lives for the future. I think it's gonna be something great. So hopefully you're as excited and motivated as I am by Jermaine's video, but more about the video is, is actual work. Yes, thank you, Mike. Sony is so proud to work alongside Jermaine as he builds confidence as well as builds strong and diverse leadership. Transitioning now into uh, another really exciting part of corporate social responsibility, I want to bring up um, the lady behind the amazing video that you saw at the beginning of the program. But let me tell you a bit about uh, Christina just for a moment here. She covers three major points from the UN Sustainable Goals, and they are number five, gender equality, and number 13, climate action, and number 14, life below water. So we're really well aligned with Christina, not only as an artisan, but for how she shows up globally to support the UN Sustainable Goals. Christina, how are you? Hi, Cheryl, thank you so much for having me. Yes, well, thank you for being here. I know it is a bit of a challenge as you're a globe trotter and you're somewhere, what, in the Bahamas now? Yes, I'm in Bimini uh, filming hammerhead sharks, mangroves, and the local communities that depend on those ecosystems and species for their well being. Yes, well, you, the work you're doing is absolutely incredible. And I want our viewing audience to really understand that you're driving not just one area, uh, sustainability and saving our, our globe, but you're really also addressing gender inequality. You're looking at uh, ocean health as well. And I really love the fact that you support uh, uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, number five for gender equality, number 13 for climate action, and number 14 for life below water. And so you're really the trifecta of corporate social responsibility. And maybe we can start out, Christina, um, as a marine biologist, uh, uh, someone with advanced degrees, um, when you were coming up and being educated and establishing yourself a, as in your career, you were the, I imagine, the only woman as a, a marine biologist. How, how did you do it? How have you uh, climb the ladder of success to be the published author that you are, to change the world and to do what you're doing? Well, thanks for, for asking that question, Cheryl. Um, I didn't do it alone. Uh, that's the honest answer. It was very, very difficult to be a, a little girl in Mexico City uh, with this dream of becoming a marine biologist. And it really has been a combination of luck and perseverance and just really hard work. Uh, but along the way, you discover a bunch of things. It's not just about the oceans and the health of our planet. It's about a whole way of thinking that needs to be changed. And so I see my mission in life um, as a thought leader and somebody who uh, will forever be talking about the importance of marrying these SDGs because the fate of our planet, the diversity of human ethnicities and races is intrinsically tied to the diversity of species and ecosystems. And it's also tied to issues like climate change and the pandemic that we're all living in. So. Um, uh, that's how I see my mission in life, and I am uh, very determined to, to keep working at it. Well, we're glad you're determined because you're going to save the earth. Uh, you're, you're solving <laughs> so many problems, you know, and speaking of problems, this has been a year fraught with challenges. Do you think that COVID has brought on that new mindset? Is it easier to connect the community at large with your goals because of the devastation we've experienced in the last year? I think there's a silver lining for sure. And I think this is something that a lot of us have been waiting for a long time, you know, this shift in human consciousness. And maybe this horrible pandemic is bringing us a little closer to, to think about our, our little planet in a different way. And Mike, I know you will agree with me that um, having a mindset like the one we've had, we've had for the last 50 years that says that the only metric that matters is profit 
has led us down this path where uh, people and planet have been left behind. And so we have an opportunity, and I see com companies like Sony as leaders and innovators, not just in the technology that you guys produce, which is the best in the world, but also in a new corporate identity that's linked to values that are related to celebrating and bringing these voices that are different. Uh, because the more diversity we have in the way that we think and we see the planet, the more ideas will be generated to make this planet a better place. That's fantastic. And final question for you, uh, the C Legacy. Uh, how do you know C Legacy is going to be successful? You've co-founded this. You've got a huge mission. What are, what are the actions that will need to take place to demonstrate that C Legacy is solving for these big issues? You know, the biggest issue that C Legacy is trying to solve is apathy and desperation. We want younger people, the generation of young people, uh, followers that we have to feel like they're empowered to be part of the solution. They're empowered to be part of a planet that actually um, sees diversity of life, diversity of ideas as a very important part of our economic life. And so Sea Legacy will win when we have a community that is um, engaged in not just celebrating diversity of life and ethnicity and humanity, uh, but also, you know, just a, I think Sea Legacy will will win when we can put our cameras down because we have saved our planet. And wow. The way that I want to do it is just by building community, by allowing everybody to be a participant and uh, an active actor in um, in you know a, a better planet, the future that we see for ourselves. Yeah, and looking at your photography, you can see that inspiration for folks to really. Uh, mobilize to make that action happen. So documenting and your education as a marine biologist really is impactful and certainly uh, believe that Sea Legacy will reach those goals and Sony is certainly aligned to support you in that. Thank you so much, Great. Cheryl. It's an, it's an honor working with you guys. All right. Well, she's keeping the globe healthy, that's for certain. And so we have to thank her for that. Uh, our next panelist up is really an amazing lady. Tawalami Austin, and she is the EVP of Philanthropy and Social Impact for Sony Music. She's also key in, in really making that social justice come along uh, and working with uh, Mike Fasulo and other leaders across Sony to really have real impact in social justice. But before we jump in, I got to tell you a couple of really amazing things about uh, Ms. Austin here. She's done some amazing work in philanthropy for Rihanna for Magic Johnson, for DJ Khaled. So it was really a natural for someone who really understands the confluence of entertainment and philanthropy. And now with technology, we couldn't be more pleased to have Ms. Tawalami Austin uh, from Sony here on the panel today. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, this, I'm really excited to be here at Sony. Um, this is a newly created role uh, I'm even more excited to add uh, technology um, to my resume and working um, across Sony with so, some of our, our great leaders. Um, with this role, my goal is to really just work with Sony and our leaders to advance our philanthropic efforts and doing that through our social justice fund, through our CSR giving, um, and just our overall philanthropy um, uh, just in general with our artists and with our employees. Um, Mike spoke about the Boys and Girls Club and the different partnerships and relationships um, and services that, that Sony is uh, providing to the Bo Boys and Girls Clubs. These are the types of sustainable relationships we're looking to create in communities and, and really exposing youth um, and giving them an opportunity to experience um, things that they may not have had the opportunity to experience. So through the Boys and Girls Club, through the COOB, um, uh, programming and curriculum that, that we're providing in schools. These are those strategic relationships that we feel will make a difference in, in communities across the country. Yes, well, I think we're on the fast track now that we've had you on board for uh, six months. And I, as I said prior, we uh, really, you've done so much great work in the last uh, six months. One announcement that we released here at CES today was the announcement of the uh, International African American Museum that is being uh, built um, and uh, raised next year using our technology. Um, so maybe you could talk just a bit about the type of partners that we're activating in that social 
social justice fund and what that means to you and what that means for us as a as a society. Yes, thank you, Cheryl. Yes, the International African American Museum. Um, these are the types of partnerships that we are looking to create with historical institutions, educational institutions, um, and really bringing meaningful uh, partnerships to communities. With the museum, we're bringing some amazing technology to the table and really introducing that um, to the community. But we're also partnering with the museum to bring really great programming to youth um, and to the community as well. So again, we talked about exposure and exposing, um, making sure that we have opportunities to expose youth to different uh, facets of, of entertainment um, and technology. Um, and these are the strategic relationships that we are creating with, with different institutions um, across the globe. A win-win, and I love the fact that you honed in on education. We're all learning and really facilitating that uh, through technology, through good works, through uh, philanthropy. So panel, um, as we round out and get ready to close out this epic session, which I believe did provide those proof points, there is a deep correlation between uh, philanthropy and social good and buyer preference. I have one question for each of you, and we'll do this in rapid succession. And maybe we start with you, Mike, first. Uh, this year is uh, a new year for us and we usually do uh, resolutions, but I'd like for you to talk about what, what your hope and what your goals are for this next year relative to social responsibility and social justice. So Cheryl, you've heard my word before, but um, my word is resilience. And you know, I think, I think of this past year and, and there's been nothing, nothing good about the global pan pandemic in and of itself. But when you think about how people have come together, I, I couldn't be prouder of the Sony Group and, and Sony North America, our team, on how everyone has come together and has, and has really, really been disciplined to succeed in this very, very challenging time and market. Uh, but think about it outside of Sony. I think there is such a momentum now going forward to really address some of these social, societal needs and issues. Um, that maybe we hadn't done a good enough job in the past. Um, so, so I say resilience. You know, if we could get through this pandemic, and we are, and the vaccine is is on its way and here and and coming, um, I think we have a really bright future um, for all of us. So, thank you. Excellent. Then let's shift to uh, Christina. Christina, what's your, what's your word for the year? Yeah, I think that word is regeneration. I think we have an opportunity to start rebuilding the ecosystems and our relationship with our planet in a way that sustains the future of life. And uh, not just for our generation, but for all of those you know, generations, the young uh, boys and girls that are coming behind us uh, so that they too have a, a living planet to enjoy just like the one we did. And so um, I hope that we all can put our heads together to start thinking about new economic models that um, bring humanity and planet together with um, financial gain. Excellent. And then Karen. Optimism. You know, awesome. I, I'm tired of hearing, I'm so tired of hearing unprecedented. And now we've got to turn to optimism and look at all the, the good things that can come out of what we've all been through. Excellent. So Wallamy, your final word? Thank you. My word is discipline. Um, I believe we have to be disciplined in how we give, um, discipline in being very strategic and tactical about our giving, um, discipline in educating ourselves about the issues that are impacting our communities um, across the country, um, and, and really just discipline in being focused um, in, uh, as, as we continue to roll out all of our strategies around social justice and our CSR giving and our philanthropic ep efforts across the company. Um, so yeah, discipline, that's, that's the word for me. Inspiring. Thank you panel for your time. And this concludes the spotlight session on corporate social responsibility and the correlation between brand affinity. Thank you.